life isn't what happens to you when you're looking. What happens to you when you're looking is called a plan. Life is what happens to you when you're not looking, when your guard is down, when your back is turned. It's going to work on a Friday morning feeling good and having your boss call you in. And you know she has a look on her face and you know that look isn't good. You know the economy isn't so hard and we've got to let you go. And all you can think about are those three kids you have at home. It's that phone call from your brother saying, hey, to found a growth and it doesn't look good. I don't, I don't know how much time I have left. You know, life is coming home from work and finding that note on the kitchen table saying, hey, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry, I love you, but I've got to go. And you're frustrated and you're betrayed and you're furious and you're angry, but all you want to do, all you want to do is hold them again. All you want to do is hear those words whispered in your ear, I love you again. No, that's life. How do you handle that? How do you deal with that, those sort of situations? You see, it's been said a hundred times and I'll say it again. You've got to go through it. That's all it is. You've got to go through it. And going through it is not a function of, of just being courageous. It's not a function of just saying, well, I'm going to close my eyes and see what happens next. It's not that. It's really a function of three things. It's a beginning, it's a middle, and an end. Before you go through it, there's a choice. You make a choice to say, well, I'm either going to stay here or I'm going to be over there someday, somehow. It's a choice. So going through it and thinking about these three steps, beginning, middle, and end, you know, you can really save yourself a lot of trouble and you can discover something more about yourself. And the first thing you have to think about when you're going through something is very simple. It's, I'm not where I want to be but I know I can get there. I have faith that I'm going to get where I want to be. So yeah, go through the grieving process. Grieve, accept that, say yes to that. You know, one day you look up and you know, you're still in pain, you're still hurting, but you realize that, hey, it's not as bad as it was. It doesn't hurt as much as it did. And I'm going forward, I'm moving forward. And at some point you merge, you get to the other side, and you know that, hey, I haven't forgotten, but the pain, doesn't hold you captive anymore. You're not crippled by the emotion, by the experience. You're not living out of, out of the past, out of your experiences of pain and defeat and betrayal. You're not living out of all that stuff. You're living in a new perspective. And that's, that's the, the key about going through it, is knowing that there is a new version of you waiting to be discovered on the other side. You know, and the point about this whole thing point about the whole thing about how do you deal with life when it happens to you is that anytime you go through something there's a fight it's either a spiritual fight an emotional fight a physical fight there's some sort of a fight but the key to the whole thing of this fight is that the form is in the fight that's the only thing you should take away from here today the form is in the fight what does that mean it means that you don't get to become this interesting dynamic creative courageous woman amazing man without going through something Right? That's where the form is. The people who are form are the people who you see them and they stand out to you. Because you know there's something about them, they figured something out about life. They're attractive to you, they're interesting to you. These people have form because they've gone through something. You know, so don't run away from the fight. Meaning, go through it. Don't be afraid to go through it. Get through it because at the end of getting through it, I guarantee you there's at least one thing you discover about yourself. You discover that there's a version of you you haven't discovered yet. You don't even know exists yet. And that version of you is, is, is much stronger, much more courageous, much more creative. And I'm telling you, a very interesting person. So go through it. Go through a bit of pain. Go through a lot of pain if you have to, but just go through it and know that you're deciding you're going through it. And by deciding, you know that I have power. I have the power to stay where I am or go where I want to go. Besides, you know, what's life without a bit of form? That's what I think. That's what I say to myself. What's the point? Give me some form. Here's what I've learned. 
No matter how disguised the urge, everybody wants to do something extraordinary. Everybody wants to be the hero of their story. And everybody has a dream, a vision of what's possible for them, despite the circumstances. I have discovered that some people can take a dream and turn it into an unbelievable reality. While others take that same thing, that dream, and turn it into an absolute failure. You see, it's easy to say, I have a dream. That's easy. You can say that when the enthusiasm is there. You can say that when your friends are still with you. You can say that when you have enough money in the bank. You can say I have a dream when at least a few people still believe in you. But I'm telling you, it's hard to say I still have a dream. I still have a dream. Can't you say that after your phone stops ringing? Can't you say that after your friends turn on you? And after the people that you're doing it for stop believing in you? Can't you say that when you run out of money? And when enthusiasm drives up, can't you stand back up after you've been hit hard, the wind knocked out of you? Can you stand up and say, I still have a dream? Dream chasing isn't for the serious, it's for the sincere. And the difference between being serious and being sincere is that serious people have a can-do attitude. But sincere people, sincere people have a must-do attitude. That's how dreams become reality. They become a must. My children must survive. My life must change. My diet must improve. There's something about that attitude that's transformative. And sincere people understand it. They understand that your dreams can shape shift on you. You thought your dream was setting you up for something over there. But now it's dragging you over here into this corner. You thought your dream was setting you up for love. But it showed you more loneliness, more brokenness, more bitterness than you've ever seen. You thought your dream was setting you up to be rich, for a new car, for a bigger house. But it destroyed your wealth, it crippled your progress. And it's pushed you back into your mother's basement. Serious people walk away right here. They stop chasing it. But sincere people can't walk away. They can't. They still feel it. They may not understand what the dream is starting to look like, but they still feel it. Deep inside their hearts, they feel it. It's a must-do thing. They can't walk away. Their tears can't convince them to. Their pain can't convince them to. The broken heart and the shame can't convince them to. They can't walk away. And when you arrive at this point, when you accept this, this new extreme environment, and you decide that you're going to keep going anyway, keep fighting through the pain anyway, magic happens. What I'm saying to you is that extreme environments will turn you into a different creature. Extreme environments will make you move differently. Magic can happen even after you lose the house. It can happen in the midst of a dark depression, even in the middle of a gut-wrenching heartbreak, in the midst of unimaginable loss. It can happen. Magic can happen in extreme environments. My question to you is, what's about to change inside of you that's going to make people think you can defy gravity? What's about to change inside of you that's going to make people say, man, something's changed. I'm going to make people point at you and say, look there, that's a different creature. There's something magical going on here because what you've achieved is a miracle. What's about to change inside of you that's going to make you ask yourself, did I do that? Did I really graduate? 
Did I really buy this house? Did I really work two jobs, raise three kids on my own? Did I really do that? Did I really beat depression? They gave me four months to live, and two years later, I'm still here. Did I really beat cancer? What's about to change inside of you that's gonna make you know that your life is beautiful, that your life is magical, and that great things are supposed to happen to you? So don't stop chasing your dreams because the conditions change. Because the environment becomes extreme. Don't stop running after your dreams because you're not where you expect it to be. Don't stop. Don't stop going after it because the way you thought you would get there is closed. Because you can't see how to get it open again. Keep coming back, keep pushing through. And I know it's hard to hear, but keep on believing in that voice. Deep in your soul that's whispering, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. You do this and I have no doubt that you too can become something else. Like helium, you too will discover your fundamental nature. That you are super fluid. And if you have to defy gravity to catch a dream, then you'll grow wings. There's something magical about you. It's time to discover that.